Hey, and welcome back everybody. Let's get two things out of the way quickly. Firstly, I'm sorry for the small break since my last video, and secondly, thanks for the countless emails and inquiries. It feels good that these videos inspired so many of you. There were two reasons why this video got delayed so much. On one hand, I had zero time to work on hobby projects besides my main job and other personal things. And on the other hand, component crisis. So this video was supposed to be about creating your hardware module or borrowing one from me, but as you might have heard, it's really challenging to get your hands on a lot of hardware parts nowadays. Even after two years, the situation is still pretty bad. This means that even if I provide a complete hardware design, you cannot really make your own and I cannot really make modules either. But I've decided to make this video anyways to share my experiences and show some designs that might be interesting for you. As a rough system diagram, here is what we would like to do. From the OBD port, we would like to convert the voltage for our system and connect to the canvases through some CAN hardware interfaces. Then, add some brains that processes the information, communicates with the phone, maybe writes data to an SD card, and some LEDs, buzzer, USB and programming ports, temperature measuring, and we are good to go. I will explain all of these boxes, but I will assume that you understand the basics of hardware design. I would also like to point out that the hardware module in my first videos was my version 1, but I started working on version 2 shortly after. And because of the supply chain issues and other ideas, I'm pretty much working on version 3 already. Let's start with the fundamentals. We would like to convert down the 12 volts to around 3 volts, where our components will operate. Although our board does not consume too much power, the voltage difference is quite significant, so using an LDO in the first version was a mistake, as it generated way too much heat. A DC-DC step-down converter is the right choice here. Once we have an adequate power source, let's spend more time on the brains and the CAN interfaces. Essentially, we want a microcontroller to communicate with the car, and we have plenty of options here. My requirements were that I wanted to control even the lowest levels myself, so an ELM327 was a no-go for me. I wanted to communicate with three CAM buses at the same time, and lastly, I wanted the module to be really small, so I can fit the internals into those off-the-shelf OBD2 module plastics. But still, there are plenty of choices depending on where and how you want the CAN's abstraction layers to be implemented. For example, in the first two generations, I used the microcontroller that had the CAN controller peripheral integrated. Well, not just one, but three. Since I like ST solutions in general, I just opened their microcontroller selector, filtered for three CAN bus peripherals, and selected the cheapest one that I wanted. This STMMCU is quite powerful, so I didn't need to worry about all the other peripherals or the USB port. For this solution, I used the CAN driver from Texas Instruments, which is fairly cheap. The advantage of this combination is that we only need one type of external component, other than the MCU itself, which happens to be cheap and not terribly big too. On the flip side, finding an MCU with three integrated CAN controllers is not easy and they are more expensive, not to mention the fact that, in this case, I needed to find an external solution for handling the wireless communications with the phone. Another approach would be to find a single component that contains the controller and the transceiver part as well. The biggest advantage, apart from having just one part, is that we could use basically any microcontroller with an SPI interface and we don't need to use two controllers one for managing the CAN communications and the other for communicating with the phone. The problem with this approach is that there are fewer alternatives from these integrated CAN controllers and they are more expensive as well. Oh, and also component shortage. The two parts that would work nicely are out of stock everywhere. The third option is pretty much a combination and a compromise of the previous two. A separate transceiver, which I have shown previously, and a separate controller, which you guys know very well by now. Advantages? Is it a source, fairly cheap, and it will work with any microcontroller. But you will have to find space for two types of components per each CAN channel. Okay, now back to the diagram. As I mentioned, there was a small challenge with the first solution. The STM alone is unable to communicate wirelessly, so we need to add something more. There are thousands of easy to use wireless modules, but in the first version, I've chosen to use a small Wi Fi module, the ESP8266. This worked well, but I realized Bluetooth would be more convenient and more power efficient. So in the second generation, I swapped Wi-Fi for Bluetooth Low Energy. There are ESP modules with uh, Bluetooth as well, but when it comes to Bluetooth, 
Nordic Semiconductors controllers are my favorite. That's how I landed with the NRF52810. In the third version, sometime in the future, since I can now drop the STM, I would need a slightly more capable wireless controller, so I'll be using the NRF52832 with more RAM and flash, so I can fit the bootloader and other stuff more comfortably. To add even more functionality and usefulness, we can add an SD card slot, so there is a possibility to record and store data like consumption, speed and refueling over a longer period of time. To extend the user interface, we incorporate some LEDs mostly for debugging and a buzzer for letting the user know, for example, if a speed limit is exceeded. A USB port is always nice to have for things like firmware updates or debugging, but with this we can use our module as a fully-fledged can logger. Initial programming and debugging will be done through ST-Link and the J-Link interfaces. Lastly, just for some extra safety, we can add a simple temperature sensor to monitor the module's heat dissipation inside the plastic housing. Up next, I'm going to show you the actual PCB designs and as you can see, we are looking at two uh, different boards here. I needed to separate out the components into two PCBs so that the whole uh, package fits inside the, um, the OBD2 plastics. So on one of the PCBs, I've placed the, uh, the STM microcontroller and the CAN interfaces, the USB and on the other one uh, we will be looking at the SD card slot and the Bluetooth controller. So uh, I'm going to show you the boards in details and then I'm going to also show them in uh, real life. So let's start with the board that contains the STM and the CAN drivers. Let's start maybe with the power supply. Here in the middle you can see the uh, step-down converter from Texas. And uh, you know, it's, the, it's a pretty standard DC-DC converter setup here. Uh, you can also notice that there is a 5 volt uh, input next to the 12 volts. The reason for that is uh, the 5 volts is uh, wired into the micro USB port and we need this diode in order uh, you know not to get the 12 volt to the uh, to the ports or otherwise it would pretty much damage the computer um, a simple fuse just for the sake of safety and uh, other than that the output that we get either from the 12 volts or the 5 volts will be you know step down to 3.3 that we can use to power up the rest of the system. Speaking of which, the biggest component here is the STM controller itself uh, with its uh, extender uh, things, you know, the bypass capacitors and then the uh, power circuitry and the high frequency uh, clock for it. Down here, uh, there is an LED uh, connected and we might want to measure the, the battery. So this is a voltage divider. This part is the, the USB outlet or the USB port. Uh, in the middle we have a USB ESD component which helps uh, with uh, reducing the, the high voltage uh, peaks when connecting or disconnecting the, the USB cable. Uh, here on the right you can see the, the CAN controllers, you know, three of them one for the high speed, one for the middle speed and one for the low speed. You can also notice here that uh, in my case this is a single wire can which means that the low uh, uh, side of the can is actually ground and I, and I only have uh, one wire for the, the high side. Um, this is the buzzer, uh, pretty standard with the transistor and the flyback diode and uh, what else. So this is the ST-Link port, couple GPIOs just in case. Um, this is the part for the OBD connector and then these two ports uh, will be used to connect this PCB to the, to the other PCB essentially. And speaking of the other PCB, you know, this is much simpler. So here in the middle we have the Bluetooth controller, down there the SD card slot with a simple circuitry that can enable or disable the power of the SD card. Um, we have a low frequency clock. In this case of the Bluetooth controller, we need uh, a 32K external oscillator. We have the programming port for the J-Link. Uh, I've added two LEDs because I had some space. Really simple temperature sensor here. Uh, the other side of the, the OBD2 connector bypass capacitor and then the same um, extender board connections as we have seen uh, on the other board as well. So this is what it looks like fully assembled. It's pretty compact. 
as you can see here are the two PCBs uh, connected with uh, pin headers so these are the the CAN drivers micro USB the Bluetooth module is there the STM is there this is the micro USB slot and uh, that's pretty much it this is the DC DC uh, coil here and so you know it's pretty simple and compact this is the version 2 as I mentioned previously this was version 1 um, it's pretty ugly because as I mentioned I need to swap the LDO with uh, uh, an external DC DC module so that's why it's really uh, hacky in a way but uh, this also had the SD card slot this is the the Wi-Fi module um, the ESP8266 and then here the two PCBs were connected with uh, with cables but I think the pin headers are much much more elegant so yeah as mentioned earlier because of the component and uh, sourcing issues I should already be working on version 3 so that uh, I can you know show you a design that is more feasible and more easy to source so uh, we will see how it goes as for the future uh, of this video series i cannot really guarantee anything uh, i might be able to show some code um, that is running on this version 2 module but you also need to bear in mind that since this is really custom and also the, obviously the code is really custom for my car uh, these are all the guidelines for you so even if you can get the module or build your own and just you know upload the code it will not work for you immediately so you need to understand what's going on and you need to modify uh, the code for yourself so um, that's pretty much it for today thank you so much for watching